there's a building that really models sustainability that we could learn from, and this is the Taos Pueblo. This is over 1,000 years old in the same place. They actually think that land has been built on for 2,000 years. In 1,000 years, it has had no electrical lines to it, no water lines to it, no gas lines to it, and yet 50 or more generations have thrived when it gets 95 degrees in summer and below zero in winter. And so I would argue that this is probably the most sustainable building in North America, just because it's sustained for this long, a thousand years. I thought I'd have fun, and I ran the Taos Pueblo through the LEED certification process. Guess what? I can't get enough points. And to me, there was like a huge disconnect. Here, I felt, was the most sustainable building in North America. By and large, it will be here in 500 years. I don't know how many other buildings will. It has been here. It is one with nature. It's made from local adobe, straw ground up, and local cedar logs, and that's it. You know, a little waterproofing. The only energy chunk that they have is they burn a little wood in winter. So it's the most sustainable building, and that yet it couldn't qualify for one of our U.S. green building certification programs. And so I started to think about what's missing, what's, what's going on here. And what I came up with is that we haven't yet really looked at what the assets are in each region of the U.S. Of the US. And every region has a different asset. Uh, we're blessed here that we have natural sunlight, and that's a huge asset for us. We must begin by taking note of the countries and climates in which homes are to be built if our designs for them are to be correct. It's obvious that designs for homes ought to conform to diversities of climate. And we can't design a home in California the same as someone else does in Maine, Alaska, or Florida even. And even a Leeds building is going to be very, very different for each of those regions, but it's not addressed. So anyone know who said this? It might be a little before your time. That was Vitruvius in the first century AD. So 2,000 years ago, we were understanding and realizing that every region had its vernacular, had its architecture that was specific for that region because of the naturally occurring assets for that region. This is a U.S. solar insulation map. It basically tells us the hotspots on the planet. And one of our resources in the southwest is the sun. This huge area here is the area that gets 6,000 to 7,000, what is that, watt hours square in a day. And so the challenge I have is that LEED has done a great job. It's really brought to the forefront the idea of reclaimed materials. It's really brought in the idea of indoor air quality, locally sourced materials, many, many, many items to the forefront. And I've done LEED projects. But the challenge I have is that it's not optimized for Southern California. And we really need to think a little beyond it. It's a great starting spot, but I want us to think a lot further because our planet really deserves that right now. We have this glowing ball of fire above us, basically a furnace and we're burning coal and gas for heat and light. And to me, that means we're literally sort of spitting in the face of Mother Nature by not taking advantage of that. It's up there for the taking. So most of Orange County looks like this, and buildings that are dependent on grid power and natural gas just to be livable. So most of the buildings in Orange County are what I call they're on life support. And so if we cut that life support cord, we're probably going to have some serious problems. I don't know how long we could stay in our homes if we lost power for a few days or a week in the dead of winter or in the peak of summer if we had Santa Ana winds. And that's a challenge. And so I want to really bring the things that we learned off-grid to Orange County and Southern California. One of the programs that I love a lot is the um, AIA 2030 Challenge. It was great to have the AIA um, chair here because they've really embraced it, the American Institute of Architects. And what this is, is it's a goal to globally reduce um, fossil fuel use in buildings. They want to go 60% by 2010, 80% by 2020, and by 2030 have all buildings be carbon neutral. No, no carbon footprint at all. Well, my goal is, is to help you create buildings that can do that today. And the big one again is that buildings in the U.S. contribute more CO2 than all of our cars and trucks combined. 48% of all greenhouse gas emissions. And that's, I think, why it's so glad to have all of you here because that's something we can change. What I tell people is solar electric systems are actually the last thing you need to put on a building. And people want to go like off-grid. Someone called and said, I want to go off-grid. I'm in Orange County, I want to go off-grid. Why? The grid is great. It's what we feed the grid with. And I've lived off-grid and batteries are a nightmare. You, you're blessed to have the grid. Now just let's feed it with clean, renewable energy. 
I have a, a dream personally that a child born today would grow up on their 16th birthday and find clean air and clean water and a forest to walk through and oceans teeming with life. And that's my dream, that's my vision. And I ask you all to stand and be courageous in that vision, speak up to clients, speak up to bosses, speak up to people and educate them that we can do much, much more. Let's go beyond the point system, let's use what we have here and leave a legacy we can all be proud of. Thank you very much. Nice.